you're looking at an instrument that measures energy. It measures energy in joules. The term energy cloud has always been a mysterious enigma because anytime somebody uses that term energy cloud, we ask them, well, what kind of energy? How do you store energy in a cloud? Well, I guess heat can be a cloud, but heat usually has a tendency to seek out colder temperatures, and usually a cloud of heat will dissipate as long as there's boundaries of cooler air. An energy cloud. Well, technically it's not an energy cloud, it's an electron cloud. It's an electron cloud that emits energy. So you see, a cloud of energy is really never, hardly ever, an accurate description and depiction of what somebody's trying to describe. The minute I say electron cloud, everybody goes, oh, yeah, I, now I know what he means. And electrons release energy. If they're moving, they release energy. They give off electromagnetic radiation, depending upon the change in speed, the speed itself, the temperature of the electron, et cetera, et cetera. When an electron does anything, it releases energy. Sometimes it releases visible light uh, when it changes energy levels or direction. Sometimes it emits blue light. Sometimes it emits white light, just depending on the energies of the electron. But you got to be asking yourself where all these electrons are coming from. And we know they're electrons because of the electron flux graphs. And it's funny now, the, the Department of Commerce electron report, uh, well, it's actually a solar wind report, used to match th what we were seeing on the electron monitors. Now they don't. One time we were seeing a moderate to high flux of influx of electrons while they reported background levels only. One time they were several times for a long, long time, they were re reporting very high electron flux while the graphs are reporting none. So um, they're getting their censorship to match more and more now. So I imagine uh, when they took down ISWA, it was to kind of match the commerce reports. But all of this energy being created, um, whether it, you think it's a depleted ozone or an um, excited corona in the sun, is heating our oceans. There's no argument amongst intelligent people that the oceans are warming. And in many, many countries monitor oceanic temperatures, but the main uh, monitor of oceanic temperatures at a deeper, deeper depths is done by the Argo system of data, and they have nothing to do with North American Atmospheric Association, otherwise known as NOAA, or NASA. And when the water heats and all your bait dies, you have really hungry seals that are cold. And they're so cold, they want to leave the water, but they're too hungry to do so. They're just half, they lay upside down, their, their heads dropping down, blood getting to their, their brains, um, through that incline. They're literally upside down in the water and their flippers with lots of blood vessels running through it um, absorb their solar radiation, which is extremely warm. And that's how the seals are trying to hang on right now. And we saw this phenomenon four years ago when we did our own due diligence and true journalism. We went to the oceans. We went up and down the entire, the entire West Coast stopping short of San Francisco. We were in Santa Barbara during the Channel Island seal die-offs, the last great seal die-off. And, and when I saw seals in the bay, which I've never seen do this in, in 40 years, never seen them do this, 50 years even, never seen them do this. They were doing this in the bay and they weren't up on the shore sunning at all. They, every seal in the bay was in the water, and they were just hanging upside down, hoping something would come floating by. All that's really left anymore is jellyfish. So I hope seals like jellyfish. But the Argo system of data is, look at, this is a map of all the Argo buoys. Um, it's 
pretty consistent. So when they when they come in and say we have record warm oceans, I kind of have a tendency to listen to them more out of Norway than I do anything having to do with our you know what our agencies and our system. The buoy network is really extensive and they have buoys both in deeper thermoclines and they have buoys at the sea surface. Almost every country on the planet takes sea surface temperatures. You, you can go to your local, if you live on the coast, your local weather and they'll tell you your sea surface temperature. And I could remember fishing and looking for albacore in 65 degree water. So when, when the water gets much above 68 in the Pacific, you've got to wonder what's going on. The deeper oceanic temperatures are kind of revealing as well. How, how where, where sunlight doesn't even reach, where radiation doesn't even reach from the sun, we're seeing also a record increase at very deep depths. And that really does hint of magma and volcanism. However, that creates its own thermocline, and there's a barrier that separates itself from cooler water, it's like a like a cloud. But what happens on the surface is really indicative of the sun. And the first three feet of water, I forgot I saw a statistic, the uh, first three feet of water absorbs about 40% of your radiation. So you, you could understand how 4,000 feet, 5,000 feet deep where it's completely black, um, it's going to be hard to heat those thermoclines up to the point where you actually see a, um, a curve or an exponential trend. And there are other systems of buoys around, uh, not as not as extensive as the Argo system of buoys. The, but they do, they, they go to the surface, they transmit their data, and then they go back down to the thermoclines and start monitoring again. But, so the data doesn't really lie. It's pretty much corroborated by other countries who've tried their own experiments. They ha you know, people say, well, they have a hard, li larger margin of error because of this and because of that. But what, when they all corroborate, who, who cares? They, they come up with the same trend. It, you know, you may be off by a quarter of a degree here and a half a degree here, but everybody's trending hotter and hotter. Except, of course, you can kind of disguise the trend when, when certain people take the data and snip it. You know, they snip out the incline at the beginning, they snip out the incline at the end, and lo and behold, you know, the temperature, well, the oceans aren't warming as fast as you say, just look at my graph. And yes, that is a little deceptive, very deceptive. And so, and the other thing too is the notion that somehow methane is a response to cold, okay? And we showed you those regular fluctuations in the methane data. They go down in the winter, up in the summer, that's because Cold water absorbs greenhouse gases at a certain temperature and emits greenhouse gases at a certain temperature. The warmer water releases, colder water reabsorbs. We need our oceans to get cold. And I hate using CO2 data, but methane is even more susceptible to slight variations in temperature. It t you know, it's just a very little bit of a change will create an ocean that stops absorbing methane and starts emitting methane. So, you know, you know, I don't know how a person on YouTube can debunk thousands of oceanic temperatures. The thermometer is a very basic tool and you can buy one for $5 at your grocery store. And, and it's provided us such revelation about what's going on in our oceans, especially in the deeper, darker realms of the ocean. And other experts who are deep water experts, like the man who discovered the Titanic, he, he's taken these deep sea subs all over Atlantic and Pacific and found 
incredible, incredible volcanism. So it's, they found entire fields of lava had, had covered over um, where there used to be vents. And they, used, they had to travel for miles to find new vents where the, these clams feed upon what is coming out of these magma chambers. And so there is no doubt about it. Anybody who tells you the oceans aren't warming, first of all, they haven't done their due diligence like we have. Uh, literally, we went up and down the West Coast, once down and once up. That's twice. Um, and then we went back. We went back and did the same thing. Um, we further Furthest north we went, though, was uh, San Francisco area. We didn't go any further north. But we went from literally San Diego to San Francisco. We went into the aquariums and saw how sick the fish looked. We went to the tidal pools and saw how dead they looked and how how shriveled up the sea anemones looked and how, like bath water, some of these tidal pools had become sitting in the day sun in the summertime. There's nothing that can live in that kind of water. So it's... And then... And then what was even more startling, in, in the deeper water, um, the starfish were still there. We saw lots of starfish feeding on mussels. But anything that, was, that got left out of the water for any period of time, they could not withstand the solar radiation. Now, see, I went t to see for myself because I needed to know the answers. I cannot rely on some, whoever these people are uh, on a YouTube channel. So we, you know, we're trying to bring credibility to this this format, credibility to this platform, and it, there's just seems to be almost no credibility left in the YouTube platform. It's like a diff's information machine. So uh, we we've proven what's warming the other planets. We proved it. I mean, what else could warm every other planet? You know, that would be the sun. That's where those planets get most of their warmth. So uh, if the sun's hotter, then it would be brighter. If the sun's brighter, the moon would seem brighter. The planets would seem brighter. Uh, Jupiter, Venus, Mars would seem brighter. So those, those planets are brighter. The sky seems brighter. The night sky seems brighter. So there's, there's, no, there's no instrument that really needs to tell you the sun is hotter. You know it and see it yourself. But when people try to baffle you and confuse you, that's where we have to step in. Because how do I sleep at night knowing you could be injured by this disinformation? You could be caught off guard. And thousands and thousands of people have succumbed to this heat and got caught off guard. Don't you be one. And the, the last but not least, it the sun is hotter and many people know it um, and you think we're going into an ice age the only saving grace the disinformation people only saving grace that i can really find in their message is that ultimately their message and my message is still the same believe it or not and that is to get ready and be ready